In this tutorial, I would like to show you how I section the pileus of an agaric or the cap of an agaric. And hopefully the techniques that I use here, you can apply when working with Amanita. And in Amanita, the tissues that you'll be interested in are the universal veil on the cap, the pileus, and the pileus context. Now, because this is not Amanita, this is chlorophyllum molybdates, it's important to um, make the distinction that these different elements that we observe here are not universal veil. These are squamules or scales, and they are part of the pileus covering. However, the techniques that I'm going to use to section through them are exactly the same that I use in Amanita. And hopefully what I show you will help you get successful hand sections that will show you what you need to see under the microscope. So the first thing that you would do, if you have a hand lens, great, use a 10x hand lens to view your specimen closely. If you have a dissecting scope or stereoscope, even better. And what you're going to do is you're going to inspect the textural differences all throughout the cap to help you see if there is actually, in fact, any universal veil remnants or not. Here, we can see there's clearly a patch here that's different from the underlying surface. Again, this is chlorophyllum, so this is not universal veil, but we're going to treat it as if this were a wart on Amanita. Okay, so here is our specimen, and the area that I'm interested in sectioning is this right here. So in Amanita, this would be a wart and in order to section one, you want to work around it. so you don't disturb the actual wart. Sometimes they can fall off during sectioning. So this is a good way to grab it and not lose it. What we have left on the inside, this is all pileus context. And that's okay. So the next step is to bring down the size of everything you're not interested in working with. The reason why it's important to remove extra tissue here is when this rehydrates, it will become enormous. So let me grab a new blade, as I think the one I was using was pretty old. And we're going to get rid of this excess amount of context. We do not need that. So this we want, this we don't. One thing that's important to remember is the position. As always, whenever you're sectioning anything, orientation is important.
One way that you can avoid going from uh, grabbing your suction into 80% ethanol, then grabbing your sample, going into water, then picking it out, placing it on your slide, um, is to actually just work directly on the slide. So I've put a droplet of uh, ethanol and I'm going to use that same ethanol to pick up the samples and I want you to observe how they increase in size dramatically. actually feel like a black background would be better for this. Do I have anything black? Hmm. Yeah, I do. If you observe, it takes a while, it's not always very fast, but it will increase in size. So if we had not removed the context as much as we did, we would have a piece that was much larger here. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to grab what I think are my thinnest, but you never know. Sometimes a thick section may be actually two good ones stuck together. Now, the way that I'm placing it on the alcohol here, I'm losing orientation. But usually when working with a wart um, or universal veil and amanita, once you see the cellular structures that can form your tissue, it's very easy to know what part you're looking at. You won't be lost. Now there's two things you can do. You can add water directly or allow the excess alcohol to evaporate, but I'm just gonna add water now. Now obviously this is a lot of water, so before we place into the microscope, we can get rid of the excess with blotting paper. And before I place the cover slip, make sure that you, if possible, Try to orient what you've got, just so it's easier. When it comes to tissues like this, if you're looking at, if you're looking at a tissue that is, for example, um, like this, in your mind, because you're because you're thinking of the cap, you're trying to see the different layers. So in your head, when you're visualizing a section you made, ideally you have the same orientation of the layers when you're viewing under the microscope. If it's upside down, it's not a problem. You can just rotate your slide but what becomes kind of hard to interpret, it's just cumbersome, who wants to bother, is when your sections end up sideways and you can't rotate your slide to help you. So what we have here are several slices. They look very, very thick. The only one that I actually like is this one here. Let me put it on black so the shadow doesn't make it look double. So 
So yeah, this is the only one that I actually like. Because it's very, very thin. All these other ones are big slices of cake. Now I'm orienting them the same way, hopefully. This one looks thin. So this was the section that I obtained. And before I go into more details, I would like you to just look at the two distinct zones, the top zone and the bottom zone. I sort of placed the eyepiece micrometer dividing these two zones in case you're having difficulty spotting them. So above, we see darker, seemingly more disorganized cells in clumps. And below, we see a lot of filamentous hyphae that on the screen run from left to right, right to left. Keep in mind that the section was made radially, so if there is a radial orientation to the hyphae in the context, this is what you should see. So in Amanita, it's important to get sections that are thin enough that let you see the orientation. It's important to keep in mind radial orientation as well and follow radial sectioning. And when you increase magnification, so what I want to show you is sort of in the middle, it's where number 50 is. 50 between 40 and 60. You can see that there is the, the structure of the hyphae is very clear here. So this is that branched structure that I, I had before, but this is now an oil immersion. And you can see that these are somewhat vertical. But just get a feel for the orientation, the types of cells, what you see. 